All right, what's up, everybody? It's Sam from Drawder Man Bet. In this video, we're doing my full card predictions, picks, bets, and analysis for UFC on ESPN 26, Mahachev vs. Moises. I'll divide these videos as follows. First, I'll talk about all the picks and the bets, then on to the breakdowns, and at the end, I'll show you guys my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. The only caveat here, guys, is the way I'm doing things. So if you'd like to follow anything that I'm saying here, or I'm doing here, there's a disclaimer in the description, all right? So before starting, just to show you guys real quick my Instagram, if you'd like to, to follow me there, I put up some of the bets that I take there prior to the video, if you are waiting to see this from YouTube, or if you see, if you're willing to support me and get these early releases, you can, you'll have the video alongside some of the bets uh, right up front, all right? So if you follow me on Instagram, you can get this early, early on. Okay, so like we said, on to the, all the picks and the bets, it's not in order, then I will cover the entire card, I think the order to the best of my knowledge all right so between few holes and their own win i'm picking holes but not betting the fight uh, rodolfo vieira versus dustin stofus i'm picking vieira but not betting the fight khalid taha versus sergey morozov picking taha not betting the fight amanda lemos versus montserrat ruiz i'm picking lemos but betting montserrat just because i think the line's a little bit off but very tiny amount misha tate versus marion renault i'm picking tate but not betting the fight Mateus Gunrot versus Jeremy Stephens, picking Gunrot, not betting the fight. Aaron Phillips versus Cameron Wells. I'm picking Phillips, probably not going to be betting the fight. The odds hasn't been released yet at the time that I'm recording this video. So probably a pass, but depends on the lines. I'll let you guys know in the comments if I do bet this fight. Pedro Benitez versus Billy Quarantillo. Picking Benitez, but betting Quarantillo. Small amount. I'll explain why later on. Mayo Jones versus Anderson Dos Santos. Picking and betting Dos Santos. This is my biggest bet of the card. I think this is the best bet that I have for now. Islan Makachev versus Thiago Moses. I'm picking Makachev but betting Moses. To me it's an interesting one. I think uh, there is good value in Moses. So I'm putting not so big money on him. But I'm betting Moses here. Abubakar Nurmagomedov versus Daniel Rodriguez. I'm picking Abubakar but not betting the fight. Francisco Figueiredo versus Malcolm Gordon. Picking Figueiredo. Considering to bet Mark Gordon now, actually, people are betting Figueiredo. I would like to bet Gordon at plus 300. If he gets there, I would, I would bet this fight. Rodrigo Nascimento versus Alain Baldo. I'm picking uh, Nascimento, but betting Baldo. I explain why, right? So, on to the... On to the breakdowns. Between Gabriel Benitez and uh, Billy Quarantillo. This is um, this is a good matchup, actually, guys. The slightly different styles here. Uh, Carantillo, actually, I have this. Um, so this is I think you guys probably know this is Carantillo. This is uh, Benitez. I think the order can can mess up here, but my my the stars are correct to to the guy, you know. So to me. Uh, this fight, this guys match up pretty well. I mean, Quarantillo uh, uh, is a pressure fighter. He's not too technical anywhere. Even on the ground, he does a good job. You know, actually, he's more technical on the ground than on the feet. On the feet, he just pushes the pace, not just pushes the pace. He has some technique, but he, his best is to, is it his best when he pushes the pace, gets into guy's face, and starts throwing down, putting lots of pressure on. This guy has elite, great cardio. Billy has, you know, Benitez is a guy that is known by his uh, powerful kicks. You know, he really has. Uh, has this in his arsenal, you know, he kicks really hard. Plus he punches, not bad, he has good straight punches, good accuracy. But he's more like a guy that likes to counter, rather than take the front foot. When he comes forward, he's not the best, you know, he even looks a little bit... Uh, he overcommits, makes some mistakes, you know, so he's he's at his best when he's counter puncher, Benitez. So this, this is an interesting stylistic matchup, because we're gonna see Billy pushing the pace, trying to implement his game plan with his uh, uh, combinations inside, trying to shoot. Benitez is a good grappler, but from the from his back, he, he does pretty well, but it's nothing like outstanding or impressive, you know? So at the end, I think, uh, actually guys, I, I made a mistake here. The picture here is reversed because to me, Billy has a little bit of an advantage on the wrestling game and on the, on the, on the grappling over Benitez if he's from top, so I apologize for this when I see the stars at first, it, it made me confused. So, to me, it's you can argue that, um, you know, this could go either way, Benitez has some edge on the feet because he throws punches straighter, more straight, sorry, and he, he has a good, uh, good power, 
you know, but arguably this could go either way. That's why I'm going actually to, sorry guys, I need to fix this. So. Okay, so to me it's quite a 50-50 fight I have. Benitez is, is a small favorite, like a 55% favorite. So to me it makes sense to bet Billy here at plus 170. And the reason is, I think he's gonna be able to push the pace. Like I said, he could make it close, especially if he takes to the ground. But I expect that Benitez most of the time gonna be able to land more often. So that's why Benitez, by my calculation, is a small favorite. But uh, I wouldn't uh, bet him as a, as a favorite in this matchup. I, I would ride with a dog in terms of a bet, all right? Billy can also win by decision. I think most likely this actually goes by the, to the decision. So to me, it makes sense to, to bet Quarantillo and Quarantillo by decision, right? And these are my calculations. Feel free to pause here. Which is the next fight, Abubakar Nurmagomedov versus Daniel Rodriguez. Good matchup as well. D-Rod is known for his uh, pressure, you know, his volume, his size, you know, good uh, straight punches, good accuracy. You know, not actually not too many straight punches, but he does a fairly decent job of using the jab, the straight right hand, and then he starts swinging when he gets close to guys, you know. So he's a dangerous fighter on the feet. Abubakar is not bad on the feet, guys. He's a little bit undersized for a welterweight. He's not that tall, not that big, not that long, you know. So the rod has the advantage over the, on the size, but Abubakar is a guy that is, uh, you know, known by his surname, Nurmagomedov. He's uh, probably uh, relative to to Habib and they train together. They have uh, those, you know, great Russian wrestlers and fighters training all together. So this guy also has the wrestling, has good control. He has good grappling, you know. So to me, the advantage here in this matchup gonna, the difference actually in this matchup gonna be either the rods pressure and start landing clean on Abubakar. He's not gonna like it. But uh, I think most likely we're gonna see Abubakar fighting smart, avoiding most of the shots and then taking him down, holding him down a little bit. The Rod is a guy that has fairly decent takedown defense. He's a big guy, like I said, not easy to hold down, good camp, so he's gonna be well trained. But uh, either way, you know, Abubakar has the wrestling on, under his belt. I think he should be a favorite in this matchup, but to me quite interestingly enough, the Rod is coming as a favorite. I was expecting that people are gonna actually bet Abubakar as a dog, but I don't see this this movement. This surprised me a little bit. But uh, to me, it's also, the bookies are pretty right on what they have. To me, it's also a, a pick and fight on this one. So, like I said, I'm gonna be riding with um, Abubakar just because he has better wrestling and he's not bad on the feet, you know, even though he could, uh, the Rod could do more damage. I think at the end we're gonna see Bubakar making fairly competitive and uh, taking to the ground to make to score more points there, right? So I apologize here. I also forgot to update this part. And these are my calculations, guys. Feel free to pause here. Okay. So Bubakar by decision also to me it's probably the best bet here because the rod has a little bit more chance to KO Bubakar, you know. So Bubakar by decision, I would like to take this plus from from plus two hundred range. Rodrigo Nascimento versus Alain Bodo. It's more like a lower level fight. Both of these guys do fairly well on the feet, you know, especially Baldo. He's known for to be a Thai boxer. He doesn't have much of a ground game, you know, whereas Nascimento has a decent wrestling game and a good uh, ground game. I think he's a BJJ black belt, if I'm not mistaken here, but either way, he has a decent grappling from top. He's also a little bit more consistent. So he's the favorite here, but Baldo, I expect that this guy gonna show up. I think he started uh, showing great improvements in um, the hospital fight. He didn't quite show that because he got knocked out and uh, no, he got taken down and smashed, basically. I don't see much that's happening here against Nascimento. I think we're gonna see Baldo rising a little bit to the occasion. He's, he's training with Cyril Gunn. You know, I expect that he's gonna bring good improvements here. I think this guy has some talent, you know, Baldo, he has a tall, not that tall, I think he's probably 6'2 or 6'3, but he's a long guy, he's a, he has good uh, Muay Thai technique. I think we're gonna see again him being able to probably stuff some of those takedowns that Nascimento has. I don't think he's gonna make too many mistakes on the ground, so Nascimento, I don't think Nascimento gonna submit him. So to me, it's gonna be interesting after what happens after that, if Baldo can actually keep on the feet. Nascimento does not know by his chin, you know, this guy can be hit, can be hurt. So I'll take, uh, I'm going with Nascimento by the pick, you know, 
he could submit a uh, Lombardo, you know, if Alain makes the, the mistake. But I'll take the bet on Baldo here, and uh, the reason is I'm putting some uh, assumptions here, an assumption that he's gonna improve a little bit, you know, it's, which is always uh, quite complicated assumption, let's put it this way. But he's at a, he's at a plus two seventy five dog at the time that I'm recording this video, so to me it makes sense to bet him, All right? Baldo also can KO uh, Nascimento, so I'll probably take also the prop bet on Baldo by KO, right? If you're gonna ask me one prop bet. To me, the best prop bet here would be either Baldo by KO or Nascimento by submission. This would probably be more interesting, Baldo by TPO, because I think the line on this one gonna come at least like plus 400, plus 500 range. So I, I like a little bit uh, Baldo by KO in a prop bet as well. And these are my calculations, guys, for free to pause here. Not easy fight to predict, you know, many questions, both guys fairly, you know, inexperienced and not high level fights yet. So not high level fighters yet, so th that's why also to me it makes sense to bet Baldo here. On to the next fight, Phil Halls versus Theron Wen. Good fighter between two good wrestlers, especially uh, Wen is known by his uh, wrestling, is known for being a quite uh, similar fighter as DC is, you know, both in the in the, the way they are built, you know, both uh, short, compact guys in different weight classes, but uh, either way, both short, compact, powerful guys. And great wrestlers, Phil Halls is known as well by his uh, physical strength. The, this guy is a physical specimen for the division. Has great power, you know. Has good wrestling, good grappling. Tough to take down, very tough to hold down, you know. Halls in the past he used it to be a guy that burned his energy in the first round. He used it to finish fights in the first. And if he if he didn't, he used it to guess and uh, basically either get finished, either lose a decision. He learned how to pace his fight, he proved it, he, his style, he proved it that in two, in his last two bouts, you know, he looked pretty good. He's still not that technical, guys, he's not a technical fighter, but uh, he's got the power, he's got uh, some decent technique, you know, uh, and he blends things together, you know, he knows how powerful, how strong he is, he uses his size to his advantage, he explodes when he should explode with now with its takedowns, heavy ground and pound. So this guy's the favorite here, but they're on when is game. This guy also, he's really, sh he's quite short, right? For the middleweight division, six, five, six, five feet, six, and uh, not the longest guy, but he packs some power too, you know? He's not gonna be intimidated by holes. He's gonna try to move forward, bang with holes, take him down, do what he does. So it's gonna be a clash of styles. I think holes is a decent favorite here because he, he should be able, right, to use the range to land us more power on win. You know, win probably gonna swing you know, a lot for the miss. You know, and Hall's gonna pick him uh, apart a little bit. You know, crack. And Hall's has power, like I said. Hall's also can take him down because he can time that. Even not being the the better technician, he he's got the power and the size. And it's an MMA fight, so guys, Hall's is a favorite. I'm going by him by round two TKO. But in terms of a bet, it's quite complicated because Halls used it to have problems in the past, you know. I think if Wen actually starts cracking and start landing on Halls, we're gonna see Halls brawling, which would make things interesting because in a brawl could fairly go either way, even though Halls has a good chin and more power. But uh, and Wen, uh, again, he's, this guy's game, he's gonna try to implement his game plan. So it's a complicated uh, fight to bet, in my opinion, where the lines are at now. I'm uh, I'm gonna be interested probably in win by decision. You know, if I can get their own win by decision at plus 400, plus 500 range, I would go for this. You know, but uh, definitely Halls has more chance to finish this fight, and even on a decision, I would favor Halls a little bit. You know, so Halls by decision, uh, by round two TKO is my pick. But in terms of a bet, quite complicated. I would try to f fish for their own win by decision at plus 450 range. All right. Onto the next fight, Amanda Lemos versus uh, Montserrat Conejo. Interesting matchup here, you know, Lemos, this girl uh, has the potential to be the champion, let me put it simply as this, you know, because she's so physical, so powerful, strong, athletic, great striking, you know, so if she brings the training, if she brings the conditioning, the good cardio, she could be the champion here, you know. Uh, Montserrat, she, she had good, uh, a good game plan, you know, and a good execution against uh, Cheyenne Base. 
she basically dominated with one technique with the hand and arm throw. She'll probably try, probably not that move specifically, but she's gonna try to out wrestle Lemus. She has to because on the feet she's just gonna get picked and gonna get KO'd. You know, that's uh, how good Lemus is on the feet. She's actually excellent Lemos in the counter striking, but when she takes the front foot, she's also does a fairly good job. So she's probably one of the best uh, strikers in the strawweight division. She's one of the best counter strikers, especially because of the power again. But uh, Montserrat gonna try, guys. She's gonna she's tough. She's Mexican tough. She's gonna try to get inside, out wrestle Lemos. She could try to make it competitive on the feet, but I think she's gonna start getting hit. She's not gonna like it, and she's gonna try to wrestle. It's gonna be difficult to wrestle Lemos again. Super big girl, athletic, good takedown defense, tough to hold down. I think Lemos by KO here, guys. I said that I would bet Monserrat because the line to me is a little bit off, you know. Monserrat at plus 450. There is a little bit value there because she could pull out some like wrestling game. She could survive against Lemos and uh, hold Lemos down. Lemos was controlled a little bit. I don't quite remember which bout now, but I saw. Uh, Lemos being controlled a little bit, you know, and she she's not like a volume puncher She's like a power puncher, which is also quite complicated because The KO at times cannot come, you know But again, uh, Lemos uh, Definitely the favorite here, but in terms of a bet to meet Montserrat at plus 450 and uh, Montserrat by decision also at plus 600 if the line gets there. I'm interested too. All right, and these are my calculations, guys. Feel free to pause here. Kalita versus Sergey Morozov. Interesting one. Actually, when I first saw this one, I first started checking the videos. I was thinking that Taha would dominate this. I started thinking again after. I'm thinking this is more like a 50-50 fight now with Taha with a small edge just because he's bigger, stronger, hits harder. But Morozov, guys, this guy, he got quite dom uh, dominated against uh, Umar Magomedov. But it was a different animal there to me, at least, you know. Taha, overall, well-rounded guy, good power, like I said, decent wrestling, good grappling. But uh, in terms of skill sets, quite similar, you know, they are built quite similar, even though, again, Taha, more compact, more like, uh, you know, dancer in terms of uh, his muscle mass. This guy is a little bit bigger and stronger here but uh, Morozov has the experience he has the good wrestling he has decent hands you know even though he's quite uh, short with the short limbs here he could make it competitive because Taha tends to overextend to overcommit because he trusts his power so much I think we could see Morozov actually being the more technical guy here making fairly competitive on the feet and taking and holding Taha down Taha is not e easy to, to hold down but he Morozov has some technique for that. So guys, to me it's uh, nearly a pick -em. I'm going Taha again by decision. But the difference here is just uh, in case Taha starts landing a little bit heavier and start tagging Morozov. I think this is more likely to happen. But again, Morozov is game. This guy will try to keep it standing. He'll make it competitive on the feet and he'll, he will shoot. And from there things can be very interesting whether Taha can actually nullify those takedowns and get it back up all right of course Taha can also take Morozov down so uh, he also has that you know but either way Morozov proved himself against good wrestlers that he's tough to submit tough to hold down you know good takedown defense so again guys not an easy one to call and definitely not an easy one to bet this one I'm gonna be uh, passing all right actually probably what I'm gonna be doing is betting fight go to the decision or Morozov by decision if the price is right, plus 400, you know, or Taha plus three, 300 by decision, I would take it as well, all right? Okay, um, Aaron Phillips versus Cameron Wells. I didn't put their pictures here, uh, forgot about that. So Phillips is the better fighter here, guys. Wells is basically just a big guy for the division, you know. He tries to wrestle, guys, which probably makes this, things, this matchup quite interesting because Phillips is known for his... Uh, his lack of takedown defense and his inability to get back up quickly and, and keep standing but Phillips is a great kicker good striker you know more like a power striker with the kicks you know not much many combinations but either way I think if he keeps standing he's gonna probably dominate else because else takes lots of risks you know he he's a big guy for the division he uses his size pretty well he clinches guys but 
rather than that, he doesn't have much technique, you know, some wrestling, not bad grappling, but I think we're gonna see actually Phillips being able to get back up on this one because he's the better grappler and else is not like a great BJJ guy or anything, you know, so I think else is gonna maybe take Phillips down but struggle to keep him there. We're gonna see Phillips getting back up and gonna basically dominate on the feet. I think he's uh, much better than else here on the feet at least, you know. What actually makes things interesting, this one is that Else is in Jackson, so you could always expect the fighter to improve here. But if I'm not mistaken, he's been there quite a while, but he hasn't yet catch up with the technique. That's why I'm actually going Phillips here, I'm not going to be betting. This fight probably depends where the, the line is open, you know, where they stay. To me, Iron Phillips is like a minus 200 favorite here, you know. So if Cameron Isles comes something ridiculous like plus 400 dog, you know, then I would take else, you know, or if I could take Phillips at minus 150, this range would be interesting on him, or to me it would be basically a pass here, guys. These are my calculations for future pods here. Miles Jones versus Anderson dos Santos. It's an interesting one. These guys are fairly even match up, evenly matched on the feet, you know, both quite good strikers. Jones packs a little bit more nature. Yeah, not natural power, but he explodes a little bit more, whereas Garinja, he's a guy that throws more straight punches, good natural power, a little bit longer here. Jones is known by his wrestling, he's a good wrestler, you know, but he's not that, that an excellent of a grappler, not a BJJ player. So that's why, to me, it's going to be quite complicated for him to fight a BJJ black belt in a good grappler in Anderson Santos. To me, actually, Jones is going to try to use his wrestling his, his wrestling is a counter, uh, wrestling not to get taken down. But on the feet, I'm still favoring Anderson dos Santos a little bit. He has a little bit more range and throws straighter punches, you know. Even though Jones probably does a little bit better job of putting combinations together, I think the basic one two gonna work pretty well for Anderson here. So I expect that Anderson keeps it standing and uh, eventually he's probably gonna shoot to take, to take it to the ground. He may not be able to take Jones down. But I think still on the feet, he's gonna probably get the better out of it. Uh, as also because Jones wouldn't want to get taken down, so he's probably gonna be worried about the takedown defense, gonna start uh, getting hit on, uh, on, the, on the feet, you know? So to me, Anderson is a quite decent favorite for these uh, factors. Plus, he's a more experienced guy. He's a little bit uh, taller, not not much, like one, one inch or they have maybe the same height, but. Uh, Anderson is a little bit longer here so guys to me basically I like the bet on Anderson here to me uh, it's the best bet of the card I'm going him by inside the distance he could either KO or, or submit uh, to Santos but uh, between that and decision to me it's 50 50 so that's why it actually makes sense to bet Santos he, he could win basically anywhere you know and as a plus 150 140 dog i like this one i would have him as, as a minus 140 favorite i would bet anderson as a minus 140 favorite but he's a plus 140 dog to me this is a great bet and i'm taking it and it's my biggest bet like i said but guys if you are if you are picking and betting jones here you know you're probably expecting that he can keep it standing you know he could take anderson down in the in the end of the rounds you know to to edge a clear decision you know so to me if you're betting jones i would say go for a decision because dos santos also proved to have a good chin of course he can be be ko'd but i think he has a good chin as well even though he has been killed before so to me it's either dos santos or jones by, by decision i would maybe bet jones by decision as a cover bet you know as i'm going to be betting dos santos as my biggest bet of the car here all right so these are my calculations matos garrote versus jeremy stephens Another good one, you know, uh, Gerrut, a guy that a rising star, you know, 18-1, great record, lost split decision to uh, Kuta Teladze. Great grappler, guys, you know, pretty okay striker, you know, not the best. I'm rating him two stars here just because I didn't want to put Stephens as four star, but he has a quite decent uh, stand-up game as well, especially on the defensive part. He's tough to hit, he times one twos and jabs pretty well when the opponent comes in. Great wrestler, great grappler, you know, tough guy, good camp, quite uh, quite long for the division. He's not that tall, but uh, 5'10 for a lightweight, not that tall, but, you know, quite lean and, and a long guy. Stephen's known by his power, pressure fighter, excellent 
you know, basically very good ev everywhere, you know, developed his wrestling, especially his counter wrestling throughout the years. Big puncher, you know, uh, massive experience, like I said, tough guy, keeps pushing. So gonna, we're going to see probably Jeremy Stephens putting like a garrote on his, on his back foot, trying to make him, uh, you know, Stephens going to try to land big on Gamrot. The question is, can uh, Stephens stuff those takedowns? I don't think so. I think Gamrot is that good of a wrestler. He can chain wrestle. He can uh, uh, basically use also his explosiveness. He's an athletic guy. You know, he's a, he has an excellent ankle pick. You know, I think it's one of the best ankle picks I have seen, at least in the UFC. So I think going to be tough for Stephens to fight a guy that can take him down basically almost every time. And uh, Stephens probably gonna be able to escape sometimes, you know, has a good framing, good, good, uh, good with the underhook stuff to hold down. But Gamrot is a grappler, you know, he's gonna use ground and pound, he's gonna try to take the back, he's gonna try to control, reshoot inside, you know. So it's a tough matchup for Stephens. I'm going Gamrot by decision, probably I'm gonna be betting Gamrot here by decision, you know. But the line shows this guy is a strong favorite, and he is, you know, I'm going like 60% by my calculation, but. With this one, I wouldn't go for Stephens because uh, I think Gamrot gonna gonna prove his wrestling and his grappling in this matchup. All right, Francisco Figueiredo versus um, Malcolm Gordon, another good fight. Figueiredo known by his striking, you know, he's known as a sniper here, but his snipes on the front foot, he he takes the center of the octagon, then he throws you know, long straight punches, great kicks. You know, he's quite creative can uh, throw some uh, unorthodox techniques at time. Good to take down defense, tough to hold down, you know. So this guy is, uh, is complete. He's quite similar to to his brother in this regard, you know, but he's not a, a, a big power puncher, you know. He's more like a, a sniper, actually. He can, uh, he can pick his shots pretty well and pretty accurate guy. Malcolm Gordon, excellent fighter, very, very well-rounded, good uh, punching power. You know, good combinations, good wrestling, good grappling. The only problem this guy has, and that's what I think gonna cost him the fight, is the chin. He has been tagged before, he has been KO'd four times, if I'm not mistaken here. And the Figueredo is known by his accuracy, like I told you guys, he's quite long for the division. Uh, Gordon is also not not small, not uh, not short for the division, but Figueredo, if I'm not mistaken, has a couple of inches on him. You know, and uh, this stylistic matchup favors Figueiredo because Gordon is also an aggressive guy. You know, he wouldn't be able to fight too much on the back foot, Gordon, because he's going to start getting tagged. He's not going to like it. He's probably going to panic wrestle or something. So to me, it's Figueiredo by TKO in this one. But in terms of a bet, it's quite complicated because Figueiredo is like a minus 400 favorite here. So I would pass in terms of a bet, but... Um, Figueiredo versus is definitely uh, quite strong pick here, guys. So I have him like a 50% favorite, 60% favorite, all right? So, yeah, it's him again. I will fix this one real quick. Yeah, so like I told you guys, to me, Figueiredo by TKO is the safest pick here. I would bet him by TKO at plus 300 in range. No, this could go to the decision if uh, Gordon can somehow survive. He could make it to, to the, as a decision, you know, he could like keep on Figueiredo's face, take him down, make it interesting there, you know. So I'm not ruling Malcolm Gordon totally out here. And actually, if uh, the line becomes ridiculous, like Malcolm Gordon plus 400 dog, I would bet him, you know. But for now, I'm passing on this one and going to Figueiredo by TKO. Rodolfo Vieira versus Dustin Stolfus. This is a quite easy one to break down. Vieira, basically known by for his BJJ, his, his athleticism, his physical strengths. But we saw what happens when he cannot uh, implement his ground game, when he, when he can't finish guys, he panics, he's not a good striker. He, he tells that himself that he has problems when he, he's about to fight, he has lots of anxiety. So it's uh, always something super tough to deal with. He's fighting Stoltfus, who is, who is not a great fighter himself, you know. I'm also underrating, uh, rating him a little bit under on the striking. He's better than uh, Rodolfo Vieira just because Vieira panics, you know. But in terms of technique, he's also not the best technician. He doesn't uh, pack that much power, so that's why he's getting 
a little bit under uh, underrated here in this regard. In terms of wrestling and grappling, not a not a bad uh, fighter. You know, he's a pretty good, pretty okay grappler. Not not excellent, not bad. Pretty okay wrestler too. But Vieira is definitely the grappler here, guys. And uh, Vieira has the size and uh, the strength and everything. Vieira should dominate. That's what he should do. But again. He has these problems that are more like uh, mental problems, you know, for uh, all the anxiety, this type of things, which is always complicated in a fight, you know. So I don't blame you if you want your bad Stolfus. I'm gonna pass here because to me, Vieira should be a strong favorite. Just if he just comes calm and comes patient and doesn't panic in case he can't, he can't finish Stolfus quick, he would dominate either way because he's so much more physical and Stolfus doesn't have basically. Uh, much of a, he's not a great striker or something, you know. So Vieira should dominate, but again, guys, quite complicated. I'm going. Uh, these are my calculations. I'm picking Vieira, but we're gonna be passing this one. Misha Tate versus Mero Renault in the coming event. Back, uh, come back for Tate. Interesting one. Tate, uh, she's a little bit overrated in my opinion. Okay, guys, I know that she's a former champion and everything. She's a good grappler, but in terms of striking, she's nothing uh, outstanding. Okay, she's even a little bit behind the average uh, in the UFC, of course. I mean, she has okay straight punches. She She's tough, you know, she has a good uh, chin. She's, she's a tough girl. She keeps pushing, but uh, she's neither a great wrestler. You know, she's just a great grappler. So, but she's consistent. She's been there, you know, uh, for a while. But again, she's not the, the most, uh, you know, fast, athletic, powerful girl. She's fighting Mary Renault, who is 44 now. But in terms of skill set, she's the better striker, Meryn Renault. In terms of grappling, I'm rating them fairly same because uh, Renault is the better wrestler of the two, even though Tate has the grappling edge. But uh, Renault is also not a slouch, you know, she's a, a black belt herself. So it's going to be an interesting one, actually, because uh, pick, your, pick your poison here. You're either going to bet on Tate based on her chin and her toughness, or you're going to bet on Renault based on her striking and her athleticism, you know. Tate's also almost 10 years younger, even not being that young. Tate's probably, what, now 35. Renault is now almost 44 now. So it's complicated in that regard, you know. So I'm going Tate just because I think she's going to come hungrier. We're going to see her pushing the pace more. What I don't like about Renault is her lack of uh, risk that she takes because she doesn't have a good chin, you know. So she doesn't take many risks. And uh, she could uh, just slip a decision just because of the lack of activity. But again, guys, if people want to keep betting Tate, I would definitely take Renault at plus 170 range, you know. She has a good chance to win, the, to win this fight. She's more, she's faster, more athletic. She's going to be able to get back up, you know. The question is, can Tate make it a grinding, uh, a grinding match where she gets on uh, Renault's face and keep grinding? I think she can. I think she'll try. But again, Renault has fought girls like that before, you know. That's the style that you have to have to beat uh, Mary Renault. But uh, again, she will try, you know, despite her lack of uh, of uh, risk that uh, Renault takes. I think she'll try and could be close, guy could, guys, could be a either way split decision type of thing, you know. So fight goes to decision here, probably the best outcome. But uh, I think the price on there are going to be expensive, you know. So I may bet Renault by decision because there's a dog. I th I expect to get her at plus 250 range by decision, which makes things interesting for me, right? On to the main event, Islam Mahachev versus Thiago Moises. Excellent fight, you know, this is an elite fight. I mean, both of these guys are excellent everywhere. Makachev picked up his striking throughout the years. He's not yet at the highest level striking, but it's tough to, to strike with this guy just because he's an outstanding wrestler and grappler. This guy is elite. Especially with, with the defensive part, it's nearly impossible to take this guy down. I know that, uh, I forgot the name of the guy, took him down there, but it was a brief of a second and he was always countering that. You know, so this guy is excellent. From the top, Habib style, lots of control, ground and pound, reshoots, you know. Has been around forever, young guy, super tough, pushes the pace, you know. Moises very talented guy you know especially everything defensively this guy does is excellent great counter puncher great counter 
counter wrestler, not an excellent counter wrestler, but very tough from his back, you know, great submissions, very fast with the leg locks, you know, he catches guys with the, all the time, creates scrambles, get back, gets back up, tough guy himself. The only problem I have with Chagos, Mo Chagos Moises now is this, his, um, basically his lack of, uh, you know, heart to win fights. He, he fares himself as a counter striker. Which is always complicated because he waits a little bit too much, you know. He can, he used he could he took a front foot in his last bout, you know, against Alex Hernandez, which was good to see, you know. He can he has that in his pocket. He's a good striker, also on the offensive part. But it's gonna be Makachev pressuring him, you know. So Moisés gonna have to, gonna have to stuff those takedowns and keep it standing. He can, guys. He can stuff those takedowns. He can create scrambles and attack from his back. Mahachev, I don't think he's gonna be submitted, but he's not gonna be able also to implement, to do basically whatever he wants with Moises. Moises is gonna fight him, you know. So this is, this is Mahachev's uh, fight to win. But guys, I would be careful to bet Mahachev at plus, minus five hundred. What is he's at now? You know, to me it's too much, because uh, again, there is a chance that Thiago Moises is gonna stuff some of those takedowns and get back up. This is a five round fight, you know. So Makachev gonna keep gonna have to push this all the time, you know, and he's gonna push his excellent cardio. But Thiago Moises brings the cardio, you know, there's a chance that he, he brings it, you know. He could get back up, he could make it competitive on the feet, he can land a clean shot on Makachev. I don't think he finishes Makachev, but he could steal rounds because of those clean shots. So I'll be care very much careful to parlay Makachev on everything here. You know, and as I told you guys, I'm betting Moises here. To me, he's like a, put it like in the worst case scenario, he's at mi minimum a plus 250 dog, you know, live dog in my opinion, you know. You can catch him at plus 450, so to me, the bet is bet here is on Moises, you know. But, um, but yeah, these are my calculations, guys, you know, so Makachev around between 55 to 60% favorite. I think they have basically the same chance to finish each other, which is not that big. Makachev has way more chances by decision, but Moises at plus 600 by decision will take it as well. I think this is going to be available as well. You know, so I'll probably bet Moises here. I may lose, you know, but uh, to me, it's uh, there's a decent chance that I can win. And, and uh, to me, the value is definitely on Moises, all right? So, guys, uh, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe. So, let me show you guys real quick my Patreon. I have three tiers. Basically, for 10, you guys have early releases. You know, this uh, this bout has some interesting... Uh, this fight card has an interesting bets. you know, for example, Anderson Dos Santos. I expect that people bet him at some point. Let's see if that happens. But those early releases where you guys can parlay between different events. So very easy to get 10, 10 bucks back, $15, you guys have line by line all the props that, that I take, and $50 line by line all the bets that I take on binaries between all events. So let me just show you guys quickly how it looks like. So this is for the for this month. So the last card, uh, I didn't do that well, you know, it was a nearly, uh, I lost one and a half units, but just to show you, you guys what I had from, uh, some successful cards so UFC fight night on 88 where I bet you know I have many bets per card you guys can choose from that as well you know I had quite a nice profit here of 12 units and the, the $15 uh, line by line would be exactly this you know whoever I'm betting but focus on the prop bets you know for 15 the $15 tier so everything that I have with the with the uh, risk units which you guys can compare with this right and uh, for the $50 tiers, everything line by line combined with different events, you know, with the amount that I'm betting. So basically you guys could just copy if you trust me and uh, you could basically copy and uh, just hopefully most likely cash at the end. All right. So guys, thank again. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends and uh, talk to you next time. This is Sam from Brother Man Bet, bringing the best, most consistent and transparent betting strategy for you.